Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. We're filming this on a Saturday, but this is going to be airing on Sunday morning. So I hope you guys are having a wonderful, easy, easy like Sunday morning day of rest and relaxation. I'm so excited to have Danielle here. And I was saying before we got we start hit record, I've heard some of Danielle's story, but I stopped. I stopped the interview because I wanted to hear the rest of it myself on my channel selfishly. <laughs> so, um, so before we get into this, though, guys, if you after we talk about this whole throughout this whole episode, if you still have further questions regarding ASEA, there is a phone number down in the description box below that is Jay's phone number from spiritually raw you just text that number say bryce info and he will get back to you and talk to you get have a one-on-one -on -one conversation i know that there was someone in the comment section that said they text they didn't get anything back just double check to make sure that you typed in the right number and not some random stranger just got a text that said Bryce, I see you. <laughs> they're, like, like, they're like, whatever. Um, you know, and if, if you're still having problems, just email me and I'll connect you with Gay, uh, with uh, Jay because Jay is really good about getting back to people. So, and I'm grateful because I am not, I'm not a scientist. I'm not, you know, so, so he can answer a lot of it. And I'm new, I'm, I'm vlogging myself as we speak, taking this product. So, um, I'm new as well. So, and that's why I'm glad to have Danielle here because you've been doing this for a while now, haven't you? Yeah, I've been using Asia. Since 2014. So, yeah, <laughs> so I, I was just thinking like, wow, it's 2023. Like that's we're coming on nine years. I didn't even know it was that old. So <laughs> yeah, it's like the best kept secret. It's amazing. Well, and I, I have to be careful about how I say this. And um, and we'll talk more about the integrity behind this. One thing that really got me. Well, first of all, Catherine, who is a, Ed Edwards, who is a mutual friend of ours. Um, I trust her because she's a biologist and she's awake and she's aware and she saved my dog with her diet. And so I really trust her with the integrity of the products that she promotes because I think Danielle, I think a lot of us watching right now, we, we do want to, we don't just want to hawk stuff because it's a moneymaker. We want to actually have integrity with the products that we are promoting. And that's why I promote yoga. And I, I myself have been in India, like, so, you know, you got, you got, you know I, I'm a living proof that this, this works. And so, um, and Danielle is living proof that ASEA works. And so, um, so Danielle, oh, I was going to say that. So the doctor who created this product, he did not sell out to, we'll just say the big corporations that control yeah. medicine. He didn't sell out. Uh, it's that's like, it, that speaks volumes. Like that's all you need to know. He basically, I actually know the story because I've heard it straight from his son and daughter and one of the investors that had been part of like owning the patents and intellectual property that they had that they were trying to sell. And uh, he basically, his name is Virgis Norton. And he basically said, look, there's six people that I can't look them in the eye and tell them they can't get this anymore. Because the company was basically saying, look, when you sign over, everything. You need to stop your beta test group. You need to stop uh, production. And he was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. We've got people on this that need it. They're only here because of it. And they were like, look, they'll do their best. It's not on you. And he said, no, it is on me. And he walked away. Like that how many people would do that? I you, like, we're talking generational wealth. Like we're talking multi-millions and he 69 years old, retired. And he's like, no, this is, this is meant to be for the world. And this will be my legacy on this world. That makes me, and I will say, so a little backstory with me is I come from a really big medical family. So my name, Bryce, is my mother's maiden name, big thing to do down here in the South. And the Bryces of South Carolina, um, University of South Carolina is the Williams Bryce Stadium, the Williams Bryce Medical School. And um, just generation after generation after generation, that was the family business was medicine. Uh, unfortunately, our family business can't just be handed down. You actually have to go to medical school to, to get it. But, but, and, and for, for me as a child, I remember as people would always be afraid of hospitals, but I loved going to the hospital because I, I correlated that in my mind with people who loved me and protect, like, that's where I went to go see my granddad who was head of surgery. My dad's, yeah. a vet, this is my mom's son. My dad himself is a veterinarian. And when everything, now I started to get into the Eastern Ayurvedic medicine in India. So I, I didn't go to the medical doctor that often because I relied more on, on natural stuff. Right. But when uh, the, the event of 2020 happened, I had a real big dark night of the soul because I started to question the integrity of my own family members. And my mother, her father, my grandfather was head of surgery for the clinic that he worked in. 
and he died when I was four. So I, I have very few memories of him, but I loved him. And that was my mother told me that when he died at the age of 56, he never got a chance to retire. He got colon cancer and then six months later was gone. He was at war with the, we'll just say the big corporation you, that starts with the PH guys that, um, cause of censorship, uh, he was at a war with them because in the, this was in the eighties because he, he believed they were overstepping their bound, their boundaries. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he and my mom said that he would warn his colleagues in the hospital would come to his deathbed. And my grandfather would say, you guys have a, have a battle on your hands. They're they're overstepping their boundaries. And my grandfather was like, as a doctor, I will call on you if I need you. Otherwise, back yeah. away. Yeah. Let me, stay in your lane. Let me yeah. as a doctor, I've taken the oath to heal humans. I take that responsibility seriously. So that kind of helped me a little bit, like regain my my what there are. There are, and I love our friend Catherine always says, you can't tar everyone with the same feather. There are doctors out there that know what's going on and that mm -hmm. will try their best in within their confines of what they can and can't do to help their patients. Yep. And that's, and so we have to celebrate those people. We have to, just as much as we condemn the ones who don't, we have to celebrate the ones who do. And so this guy sounds like he really became a doctor. No one, listen guys, doctors... <laughs> They work all the time. They're, they they make a lot of money, but they don't enjoy. They're not the people that enjoy the fruits of that labor. It's their family that does. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> My granddaddy yeah. sent me to India. <laughs> Let's just say, you know. So, um, you know, it's because they're they're constantly working. They're constantly on call, especially if they're emergency or it's like surgeons. You yeah. know, and so it's it's a it's a high responsibility, high risk profession, and for for doctors who take it seriously we have to celebrate them. And so the fact that this guy walked away from, I mean, multi millions, multi. Oh yeah. And to be clear, just if there's any confusion. So he wasn't a doctor. He was, oh. he, yeah, he, he brought in uh, several PhDs that worked on this to get it stabilized. So like little mini version of how this all came to be, because it's a fascinating story is a company called medical discoveries Inc had this, they were a biotech company. They um, had Virtus Norton come in to sit on their board because Virtus had retired. He had been chief of strategy at a giant company, Fortune 50, and had retired, but he like wanted something to do. So he was sitting on the board watching what they had. And he had spent like five years previous to this working with another biotech out in California. So that's why they'd asked him to come in. And um, they they ran out of money. This company was trying to bring it through for um, drug approval. And costs a lot, but it's, you know, millions in safety studies. Like it's a lot to go down just for one. And uh, they basically ran out of money. And so he, he was watching all of this and he put a team of investors together. Cause he said, you're so close with this, but you just like, you have to get it stable longer. Cause at the time, I think it was stable for like 10 minutes. And the, the kind of protocol they were going for was like, you would administer this in the doctor's office. Like you would be there, you'd get the molecules um, active, you know, you create these reductants and oxidants out of the saline and you would administer it to the patient right then and there in the 10 minute window that they're bioactive. And it was just like not feasible. It was very difficult to like figure out how to make that, you know, available on, on scale. And so they brought in, uh, he brought in several different researchers and PhDs that work in nanotechnology to help get these molecules stable longer. And when they did that, and it was stable and it had a shelf life of over a year, that's when they went to sell it. Like this was, <laughs> it's so funny. I've gotten to interview Tyler, Virtus's son. And he's like, look, I wanna be very clear. My dad originally was just looking at this as a business play. Like he was like, you'd flip a house. He was taking this technology, getting it where it needed to be. And he was planning to sell it. It became bigger when he realized that the company they were going to sell it to was not going to bring it out to market. And he said, why no. would, and why would they guys? Cause, cause that company, we know what that is. They're, they're, their business is death. Yeah. Their uh -huh. business is like keeping you, keeping you on something. I mean, it's, it's incredible when you think about that and you know, the medical community, like there's a space for it for sure. Like my grandfather was a doctor as well. And so I grew up like you, <laughs> it's like, yeah. This part, you know, you got something happen, you call, like, what's the recommendation? Well, who's the specialist I can see? Like, it's a phone call away. You're on the phone with somebody. Yeah. 
But my mom, I think almost as like a reaction to that, my mom really dove into like you Ayurvedic medicine. She was really open to my mom was ahead of the curve on so much like growing up, she would put essential oils on my feet. If I got an earache, because I was a swimmer, got swimmers ear all the time, rather than putting whatever drops in my ear, she made some concoction, it stunk, but it was like garlic and olive oil. And like, that's what she stuck in my ear. And I'm like, so grateful, because imagine like, that's so close to your brain. Like, what? I don't yeah. know, I just think about like, what are the things we're putting in us? And my mom, from when I was little, she always did that. So I grew up with like both knowing, hey, yeah. there's a place like something happens, you need surgery, like go to the best. But if your body is just like a little out of balance, like there's things that can help coax it back into balance that, you yes. know, is invasive. Exactly. And I, I always laugh. My, my mom says that my grandfather, when I was a little, cause I was born in 1983. So I was born before they had the onslaught of like Zapperty doodahs. Cause we can't say that word on um, YouTube anymore. And now like, it was only like five or something when I was, and now it's like 500. I don't you know. It's crazy. Insane. Yeah. And my mom would say that my grandfather was really big about, he, he would remind my mom, let her go eat dirt, let her lick the ground, let her body do, you know? So I look back at him now and I think he, he kind of under, even though my grandfather never went to India, never, he kind of understood the natural compounds of earth and that the body, you know, we have an, we have an immune system for a reason that God gave us. It's the, it's in the, 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 the we, people who watch my channel know, you know, the body, the, the body is the Shakti. It's the expression of the soul. And we know that different parts of the body, different organs correlate to different energies, like kidneys can represent fear of future. And so in a healthy world, if somebody has like a little bit of a kidney issue, now, if you got kidney failure, failure, yes, get, get yourself to the doctor, but we're talking like a chronic kidney problem, then you have to look at where it's starting from. Where's your fear? What's that organ saying to you? But the problem we're facing is that our world has been so polluted right. that it's hard in, in every way that it's hard to actually even come up over that hump of, of true health and true and true um, vitality of life. Yeah. You know, um, and I was saying, I, as I've been blogging myself, I, I found because I st struggle with anxiety I'm like OCD. I have a, I have an OCD uh, uh, obsessive compulsor, which I can sp speak more about on a different episode disorder. And um, I, I noticed somebody saying that their anxiety started to diminish. And yesterday I was vlogging myself and I've only been doing this for like four or five days. And I started, I, I noticed I was pretty mellow yesterday. And mm -hmm. I was like, is that the, I, and I said in my vlog, I don't know. We'll see. I feel kind of mellow today too. You know, is that allowing the brain to kind of, re heal itself and so the 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 sparks that go that you know because anxiety is caused by the neurotrans you know the emdr stuff where they work with it it's it's like is that what this product is actually doing to allow somebody who suffers with where the anxiety gets so bad it becomes a disorder it's allowing healing to actually happen if that makes sense it's allowing the body is actually allowing the 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 transmission of thought to actually happen so the brain can can heal itself and the the thoughts can heal itself so i don't know we'll see guys i'm i'm vlogging for like i'm gonna be vlogging for like two weeks straight so we'll Love see it. my boyfriend's also doing it and he is not he refuses to read anything about the product because he wants to jot down everything he's feeling without trying to be influenced by any outside ah. voice. that's going to be interesting too to I see do. uh to see how, what he notices as well. So anyway, but Danielle, let's go back to your story. Like ex you had, you were, you were in a terrible car accident, correct? Yeah. So I, uh, when I was 23, I was, uh, well, little background. I'm a biologist. That's what I got my degree in, in school. That's why Catherine and I resonate so well with each other. Uh, cause I like her fascinated by how the body works. Uh, for two years out of college, I went to university of Virginia. So graduated there. I lived in Charlottesville for a little while and, uh, I did teach for America. So I was teaching for two years and the summer after my second year of teaching, I was home visiting family in Maryland and, uh, was up seven o'clock in the morning, going to meet my parents to go to a wedding. And a guy was driving drunk and passed out and hit my car like headlight to headlight price. I mean, it was like completely head on collision, which thank goodness, because my physical body was okay. Like if he hadn't hit me head on, he would have hit me. And um, I think my physical body would have been more hurt. But, you know, I walked away from the accident 
everything seemed fine, except I kept telling everyone that I felt really out of it. I kept saying, you know, I don't feel right. I can't think straight. Like everything feels overwhelming. And they're like, oh, you're just in shock. You know, the paramedic said that my parents took me to an urgent care center. They said the same thing. Like PTSD. And, yeah. And I'm like, I've never experienced shock. <laughs> you know, like, I was like, okay, if this is what this is, like, I have no context to, so I was like, all right, it's shock. But after a week, it was like, I had such severe pounding in my head. It felt like someone literally had a vice grip on my head and it was pulsating. I felt like there was like, I don't know how to describe this, but like, like an octopus was on my head, like going like this. And it was so intense. I couldn't handle light. I couldn't handle noise. I was rude to everybody because I just, I, my personality had shifted. I was just blunt because I couldn't handle like life. And then they were trying to talk to me and it was like, just stop. So um, I eventually got in to see my doctor and then because of my grandfather was able to see a neurologist pretty quickly. <laughs> and um, that, That's definitely a perk. <laughs> I know those <laughs> perks. <yes. laughs> yeah. As a perk. I want to go to this office here. Like, all right, phone call made. <laughs> yes. You, you, you get seen pretty quickly. You avoid the line when you're, when you, yeah. So. Yes. When you got family, it's nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, this neurologist, interestingly, you know, he basically said to me, look, you've got something uh, you, you've you've had a brain injury, uh, a mild TBI, mild traumatic brain injury. And he said, there's nothing you can really do. It should clear up in a month. And I was like, all right. So I attempted to go back to work and it was, I, you know, I was teaching. So yeah. bright fluorescent lights, you got kids that are loud. Like I couldn't handle it. First day I stood in front of kids. I was like, I have to leave and went on a medical leave. We tried a lot of things. So I tried on that medical leave. I tried hyperbaric oxygen treatments, HBOT. I did neurobiofeedback with a woman, um, Mary Lee Esty. She's up in Bethesda, Maryland. She works a lot with like our veterans that have TBI. And, you know, her protocol was incredible, the neurobiofeedback. But all of these things, it maybe took me from being a 10 out of 10 to an 8 out of 10. Like it wasn't, it wasn't healing me or like the, it would last, like after an HBOT treatment, I'd feel better for like 24 hours. And then it was like, it faded again. And uh, again, medical community, I've seen the neurologist again, and he's like, mm, maybe it's going to take three months. And, you know, then it became six months. And then at my one year appointment, um, my neurologist basically said to me, Danielle, with your type of injury, the body's done the healing that it will do. And he said, this is your new normal. And you need to shape your life around your symptoms. And you need to move on from this. And I remember thinking to myself, like, you're fired. Like there is no way 24 oh. years old. I'm going to just like accept a life where I'm in bed 18 hours a day. I have blackout fabric. I can't handle natural light. Like I can't work, you know, and I was severely depressed. I had severe anxiety. I had PTSD. I was working through a lot from all of that and from losing the life I had known, you know, and your vitality is gone. Completely. Yeah. And my identity, because prior to this, I didn't have like the spiritual background. You know, I was very identified with my ego. Like I thought I was, you know, all the things that I did in the world. I yeah. didn't realize, you know, the, the truth of who I was. And uh, after that one year point, you know, I really started to just, when he said that to me, something inside of me said, okay, well, I don't accept that. First of all, that's not going to happen. But I need to get my emotional and, and you know, mental um, space clear because if these symptoms are going to last longer, like I can't be depressed amongst the symptoms, you know, like I have a choice on my emotional state. And so I started to really do the inner work and I swear, you know, everything's vibration, as you know, in this universe. And I worked a lot on gratitude. I worked so heavily on being present because the past depressed me, the future made me anxious. And it was like perfect spiritual practice. <laughs> you need yeah. to be in the present moment. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to say too, this is, I, I talk about on my channel a lot, this idea of friction, because my teachers in India focus a lot. And we know friction on a very physical sense. If you go for a run, it's going to cause sweat because the body's in movement. That's friction. But when we, we look at that outside of our lives, nothing's ever going to change if everything is perfect and wonderful. It takes what my friend Nicole, who's going to be doing the SEA as well, calls a crisis event. There has to be a crisis event in order for that friction to, to, to kind of put you in the direction. So, you know, we can look at being hit by a drunk driver as something so tragic, and it is because it does take lives. But for Danielle, it was like necessary for her soul to experience that on a spiritual level, to have that you know, I, I use, I say this, I'll say this to I'm blue and a fan. It's like a, a match. You have a match that has everything on it, it needs to light, but it cannot light unless it's struck up against the matchbook. 
right? <laughs> and so the fact that you said, no, I don't accept that was like the soul's knowing that there, that this was, this was a, this was a necessary with a work, you know, love your, this is your Dharma. Like this was a path that you had to, 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 to depart from the, what you, who you thought Danielle was. And through this event, you came into knowing the soul better and it was, and were able to course correct. So these crisis events, and that's what I love so much about spirituality is that we ha we get gain this new perspective over our lives. And so we, we stop being victims to the circumstances of our life. How easy would it have been Danielle for you just to go at 24, just like go on public assistance or whatever, and just close the door and just be depressed and be living in that victimhood. But the oh, yeah. fact that you're knowing your inner knowing there was, there was some gnosis inside of you that was like, uh, uh, no, that's not, this isn't the end of the story. Yep. And it was so strong because up to that point I had it was total victim mentality. I didn't deserve this. This shouldn't have happened to me. Why me? Like that's the space I was oscillating in and it was making me miserable. And so, you know, part of um, the yoga teachings that I love and my teacher told me, she said, Danielle, it's like life is a very simple equation. External world plus your internal response equals your reality. And I didn't learn this till later, but now contextually, I'm like, oh, that's what I did. My internal response had been this victimhood. And after he said that to me, this shift happened and I went, okay, no, I can't change the accident. I can't change the brain injury, but I can change how I'm responding to it. I can ask myself rather than what, focusing on what I can't do anymore, what can I do? What would bring me joy in this more moment? You know, what can I be grateful for? And that shifted my world. And I'm telling you, when I shifted internally, my vibrational state shifted. And as we all know, what you attract is what your vibration is, you know, the match for it's energy is energy. And so we got a phone call after this had all happened. I worked on myself, I get a phone call from an acupuncturist that knew my mom and said, there's been a breakthrough. I'm using it in my practice. I've seen nothing like it in all my decades. It helps with cellular repair. It stimulates the body to find where are you damaged, what needs to be put back in balance, what needs to be turned on that's maybe been switched off, all those things. And she said, every client is having a different result. Some it's helping with their digestion. Some it's helping with their mood. Some it's helping with their skin. And she said, I can't help but think it would pass the blood brain barrier and it could help Danielle. And it's interesting because I wasn't consciously aware of what I had done. All right. So I didn't realize answers were going to start coming. <laughs> so I was, when this arrived, I was completely skeptical. I literally said to my mom, like, did you flip the bottle over? Like it says saline, it's, it's salt and water. <laughs> I'm like, your friend's involved in a scam. Like I'm not interested. And my mom was like, no, 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 I really trust her. And I'm like, that's great, mom. Like, look at what Google says. You know, I did a little Google search thinking that like, oh, the internet knows all. <laughs> now we know, like whoever pays for what's up there, <laughs> you know, is what you're going to see. And uh, guru, guru Google is not such so much of a guru. So no, turns out not at all. <laughs> search engine, not a research engine. Yes. And uh, anyway, but I saw this website that looked so legitimate because it was all these doctors saying like, oh, we've looked at the research and this is just a total farce and blah, blah, blah. Fast forward years later, I had Dr. David Silverman, who you'll meet. Um, he said, Danielle, did you ever look at who those doctors were behind that website? And I was like, no. And he goes, well, they're all tied to a certain industry. <laughs> I was like, oh, no kidding. He goes, yeah, go look on that site about chiropractic, acupuncture, anything that doesn't involve a pill. And I was like, oh man, I totally got duped. <laughs> I well, totally totally agree with whoever is paying you. <laughs> you yeah, know? it was like, it was amazing. But for six months, I didn't use a SIA. Like I'm always very straightforward with people. I didn't see it when it first came to me. I thought it was too good to be true. I, I thought it wasn't real, but my mom was using it and I watched my mom have results. She had bone on bone in her hands. Like she could not make a fist. And you could see the redness, like how puffy it was, like you could see it. And uh, six weeks of drinking the liquid, they didn't have the gel back then, like this is 2014. <laughs> so it's just the blue bottle. And she got full range of motion within six weeks. And I remember saying to her mom, it's got to be a placebo. Like there's no way saline did that. And she said, Danielle, it's not saline. And I'm like, mm -hmm, yeah, mom. <laughs> so I still wasn't in. My dad started using it. He had been a football player in college. He had torn um, something in his knee. He's had issues with it for 30 years. And he always wears a brace when he works out, but he works out every day to keep his muscles strong and just keep his body in good shape. He starts using it 10 days into it. I literally run into him. I'm walking the dog 
And uh, he's like, Danny, look. And I'm like, what am I looking at, dad? <laughs> he goes, my body I don't, yeah, he's like, I don't have my knee brace on. And I was like, what? Why? And he's like, my knee doesn't hurt because I feel like I'm 30 again. I could keep going. I sh- I'm not going to because I know my body's in its mid 50s and I probably shouldn't run this much. But he was like running further, rowing faster. And I swear to you, after his workouts, he was like, I'm not sore. Like I'm repairing like that. And so my dad's more analytical, right? And he's like, well, what's the research on this stuff? Because clearly it helps with athletic performance. And interestingly, that was the research ASEA had done at the beginning. They were doing it on like the, the mechanism of how it helps like increase endurance. Like they did a study with mice. Literally the mice ran 29% further before hitting exhaustion. Like that's crazy. That well, amount that of makes sense though, because athletes, they, they're, you know, you think about just working out, you're breaking your muscles down in order to build back, back stronger. And so what a perfect specimen of, of, of animal or human to, to test it on because most athletes are relatively healthy, especially if they're young athletes. Um, yeah. And so let's see what happens with their recovery period. Um, and I will say I, I work out really hard six days a week. And I do have, sometimes I'll feel a little bit of a knee pinch here. I'm 40 now. And so I'm like, oh, so I'm really excited to see like how, like I said, the biggest thing I've noticed is my mood shifting, yeah. but I'm really excited to see the long-term effects of my body recovery too. Oh, yeah. I'm interested in that too. So, and now with the gel, like side note, because the topical for those that don't know, like the Renew 28, they market it for like wrinkles, right? Like it's great for helping the skin, new skin cells come in. But (laughs) as an athlete, you can rub it like pre-workout on the muscles that you want. Um, You can rub it post-workout like because wherever you put it, repair is going to be stimulated. And also lactic acid doesn't build up as quickly because you shift your body into burning fatty acids before the muscle glycogen. And so the lactic acid doesn't build up as fast. And so you will notice if you like run or lift or whatever, you'll notice your muscles don't fatigue as fast, which is like amazing. And then when you rub it on after the workout, you're not sore. It is a little weird. I was talking with a friend of mine. We're like, it doesn't feel like we worked out. Like sometimes, you know, I kind of like, like, oh yeah, I worked my body out. You're like, you kind of like, like that you feel that. I don't feel that sometimes. And I'm like, did I work out yesterday? <laughs> like, I did know I, I did. did I? No, that, that makes, I mean, that makes so, and I will say too, I've read a lot about what, well, and I've seen a lot about the, uh, you know, like inflammation people's, I struggle with them. I struggle with um, arthritis, which is a Vata from the dosha system for Ayurveda. That's a Vata thing. And that of course attributes to the anxiety because we know as Danielle is saying, thoughts, your thoughts generate your reality. And so for my dosha being Vata Pitta, I'm air fire. So my air, the cerebral is the dry skin. It's the dry, brittle bones. It's, it's, and so the fact that I'm noticing the, and that of course is the anxiety because you think about cerebral being thoughts. So that's what's, that's why a lot of Vata struggle with anxiety or have a propensity to struggle with anxiety. And so the fact that that is what's affecting me the first, first and foremost kind of shows the genius of this product because it's going to the source of the problem, which is the thought. It's, yeah. you know, and so, and yeah, I know, and some people, does this, is it an urban legend? Does this actually help with hair regrowth too? <laughs> Not an urban legend. I told, well, Jay, okay, so you can go back and look at videos of Jay from a year ago and look at them now, like, cause he thought it was for skin. So he was like, April's using the gel, Danielle. I don't, I don't need it. And I was like, Jay, rub the gel in your hair. And he was like, what? I said, yeah, it, It will help your body to repair anywhere that's needed. Get all your cells, do what they're supposed to do like they did when they were young. (laughs) Well, I'm obviously, I've got really thick hair and Danielle obviously has beautiful thick hair, but I know my boyfriend's like, when we get more of the gel in, he's like, I'm going to be slapping that stuff on my (laughs) (laughs) I know, I've seen some awesome pictures of people or like color coming back. I've seen that with some women. Like now all of a sudden they've got color coming back into their hair, you know, where it was, where it was gray before. Now everybody's different, right? Cause it depends on where your system has the most damage and that's where it's going to go. You know, your the gel I like, cause you can localize it a little bit more. Uh, but honestly, when this gets into your body, like it goes where your body needs. And so you're going to have a totally different experience than your boyfriend, than your dog. If you give it to your dog, like everybody that uses it has a different experience. And getting back to like my journey with it. So we, my dad does some research. He comes back to me and he says, Danielle, this is a massive field of science, redox signaling. He said, go on PubMed, 
go on Google Scholar, go look it up, go do how, how you know how to do research, you know, how you learned how to look, what the scientific community is saying about these reductants and oxidants and the role they have in disease. And I was blown away, like Watson from Watson and Crick, the double helix, um, he had an article in the Lancet Medical Journal talking about how like, I might misquote here, but if my memory serves me, it was like type two diabetes, some cancers and some brain like dementia, I think is what he was. Don't quote me, go look for yourselves. But, and he was saying, we've gotten it all wrong. They're redox diseases. It's these, this imbalance of reductants and oxidants. And he said, so the future, like where it's going is to focus on these redox signaling molecules. And he, my dad said, Danielle, do you realize this company as it stands right now, and it's as true today as it was in 2014, it's the only one globally that's been able to stabilize reductants and oxidants outside of the body so you can replenish your system supply. He said, I think this is a missing link. It cannot hurt you. It yeah, will no. very likely help you. Give it six months, and then you can make a call about if you want to continue or not, but we're going to pay for it. And I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a good deal. <laughs> so uh, I started on it and they had me drinking eight ounces a day. Yeah. Um, you know, they typically say like healthy younger people, four ounces is good because you make less as you get older, like 10% every decade of life. If you're over 50, they say you might want to double up because you just are depleted of more. And because I had a lot of challenges, it's like putting more construction workers on the job site. Yeah. You know, the, the philosophy was, well, more construction workers are better because the job will get done faster. So I drank eight ounces a day. Topical wasn't there. It was just the liquid. Bryce, I didn't notice anything. I literally, after the second month, I started telling my parents, like, I think you're wasting your money. I, I Do we really want to do this? Like, what's the point? And they said, keep on it. We said six months. So fine. Three months in, uh, the pounding that had been relentless. Now that pounding that I mentioned to you, it had been nonstop for two years, nonstop. And uh, it just, it stopped. And I woke up and I had energy. I could like focus, you know, like get the word out I wanted to when I wanted to say it. And my parents kept saying to me, like, don't you want to go lay back down? Like, do you want to take a nap? Like, don't push yourself. And I'm like, no, guys, like, I, I feel good. Yeah. And they're like looking at each other like, huh. And I, I remember distinctly going to my cognitive therapist. And she said to me, she said, Danielle, I have worked with your type of injury for 30 years. And I've never witnessed someone have such a rapid recovery so far out from that initial trauma. She said, with this type of injury, it just does not happen. Yeah. She said, what the hell is that stuff you started drinking? And I was like, I don't know. I thought it was salt water. She said, obviously, it's not salt water. <laughs> she said, what is it? <laughs> and she was my catalyst because I wasn't even I wasn't even like wondering. Right. I was just grateful that I was feeling better. And she goes, well, all my other clients need to know what this is. And so she and I were put in touch. My mom put us in touch with Dr. Silverman. He's on the medical board then, and he still is. And uh, he basically, he was so nonchalant, like totally unfazed by my story. He's like, yeah, of course, of course she got better. How long did it take? And how much was she drinking? And I was like, what does this doctor know? You know, <laughs> like, I was like, okay, I'm just going to sit and listen to this man because every other doctor I had come in contact with, oh, it's permanent, nothing you can do. Like, this is just lifelong. It like, and he's sitting here like, well, yeah, of course. And I, I thought, all right, I'm going to listen. And he started to explain how these molecules worked and how they just simply amplify the call for help. So the system can do what it's designed to do, repair damage, activate what should be. And I remember getting off that phone and it was like, you know, when you have those moments where it's like a, just a light bulb of ideas, it was like, I just, I saw the potential and I went, okay, biologist in me, right? If it did this for me, but it's non-specific. It could go into anyone's system and repair where they need. And I was like, the repercussions of that are like incredible. The breadth of things that this could touch. And then I went, well, animals, <laughs> their bodies communicate the same way. Plants, they communicate the same way. Like you want to do a little test, get some flowers, put a bouquet in water, put a bouquet in redox. Like, that's, Wait. I didn't even think about that. That's, um, cause yeah, I'm going to start it on my dog. I was going to talk to Catherine since she, uh, she, uh, ha does my dog's die. I'll my dog thinks Catherine is his girlfriend too. He doesn't understand that she's actually married. <laughs> so uh, he, he is, is has a huge crush on Catherine. But um, I, I was going to ask her how much to put, cause my dog is a rescue from India. And so when we first brought him over, he, um, 
had some like allergies and I thought it was just, oh, but then Catherine's diet changed all of that. But now I'm thinking what more can, cause I, I, I keep telling him like, I'm just going to have to keep prolonging his life because there's no way I could ever do He's like, he's my, he's my soulmate, you know? So I'm going to, yeah. I want to start it on him too, to like sprinkle it in his food and see, you know, oh, because don't I, mix it actually. Oh, so it? Okay. Good there. They're good. There we go. <laughs> All right. So put it, put it in a bowl, not metal, like glass or plastic. And my dog, I got real excited about it. Like I drink some, I get excited. I put it in his bowl. So he would drink it up. Cause he's like, Oh, mom's giving me some of what she takes. Uh, some animals like, they're like, they don't like go for it, but you yeah. can put the littlest bit of like chicken or like a little bit of cheese, like whatever your dog likes and put it at the bottom of the bowl and they'll drink it very quickly and then it's fine. But usually the molecules react with anything organic. So if you put it on food, like it's going to start reacting with the, food. the food. Yes. Okay. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah. That makes sense. And that's what's, and that's what I love too about the product from what I've heard. You can't, this product can't hurt you. No. You know, if you take too much, you just pee it out. Yeah. It, well, it just reverts into saline and you think about it, like you're just a sack of saline. Like the body is so incredible. Like nature is, it's so simplistic and elegant. Sodium chloride, right? Sodium and chloride makes up salt and hydrogen and oxygen make up water. The body uses those four and recombines into different ways, making it, you know, two to four atoms big. And these different molecules, think of like hydrogen peroxide. That's something we all know. It's H2O2. And water is H2O. You add an oxygen. Right there. <laughs> yeah, the right there. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you add another oxygen, and now all of a sudden we have a very different molecule. That's all the body's doing. And like that's what's in here. It's these different combinations of it. And so it's just to me, it's amazing. So the body uses it, boom, it goes back into saline and it's just recycled. Like, you know, this isn't processed through your liver. It doesn't go through the kidney in the way that, like, you know, when you take a medicine there's a toxic level. There's a, a lethal dose. They call it an LD50, where 50% 50 of the rats that they gave it to at that level died. So they have to titrate it down and make it acceptable for the human population, which is crazy. Like what's the acceptable number? But anyway, <laughs> everything has that. They couldn't find one on ASEA. They literally couldn't find an LD50. And it makes sense when you realize the mechanism of action and what's going on here. Like, yeah, you. it's impossible to take too much. Like there's a point where it's like, you've probably reached like saturation where like the body can't physically use any more than you're giving it. Um, but you know, I rolled my ankle the other day, I stepped into a hole and so I've been putting the gel over it. I've had no discomfort. And I swear, I think I probably like I ripped something definitely because it's like, there's a little bit of swelling still there. Um, and I wore heels last week and it just agitated the heck out of it. <laughs> uh, and I was like, oh, okay. But I, I had no discomfort. So it's like, I didn't even realize like, you know, there's a problem over there because I've just been rubbing the gel and I know the healing is going to be stimulated. You know, they say things like this, I think usually take about six months to repair. And I'm like, give me a month or two. <laughs> and I well, it, but that just speaks, that just speaks miraculous. How, how miraculous the body actually is. Oh, because yeah. the body, your body is constantly working for your greatest good. It's constantly, you know, we say in yoga, the body knows more than you do. Like the body actually knows more than you do about, you know, your brain gets in trouble. Your thoughts are what gets you in trouble. The body actually knows what's going on. And the fact that it can take this product and be like, oh, cool. Thanks. We have extra help. Now we can actually do what we're trying to do anyway. You know, we've been trying to repair, repair your shoulder. We've been trying to repair this or that. Now we have the support system, the tools to actually do it. And I, I heard, I think it was you saying, or the, uh, Dr. Silverman saying, like, this is why children bounce back so quickly. Yeah, because they're full of these molecules. It's after puberty that your mitochondria get less efficient. And so you start making innately less. And that's why we, we start to see it. Like, you know, you could get a tonsillectomy when you're 18 or when you're eight and one's going to like bounce back from that faster than the other. So it's, it's really fascinating. You, you just described it so absolutely perfectly. And the thing that I love is because it's non-specific, because it's just saying to the body, like, you know, here's your life force back. Like here's, it, here's a little bit more vitality. Yeah. And so your system's going to use it where it needs. Like if I were to ask you where your house is having issues right now, you probably got a different issue in your house than I do, Yeah, you know? And so when I have a repair person come, they're going to work on that versus your repair guy will work on something else. And so when we all drink this or rub the gel, like we're going to have a different experience. And so I just, this is why I get so excited and it's going to start for you. Like right now it's about you, your boyfriend, your dog, like, you know, your, your experience, but I'm telling you, the people listening that trust you, that trust Catherine, like you're going to get goosebumps 
And you're going to get text messages. You're like, holy cow. Like, I had no idea this could touch that. I had no idea that was going to impact your family in that way. Like, I'll never forget the first person that I had that moment with. I moved to Florida. Um, I was dating somebody. I didn't know anybody else but him. And I just, I knew in my being, I was meant to share this. So I went out networking. I just went out to meet local people and I met this massage therapist and she was like, I've heard it all. Like next best thing, just get away. Well, months later, I, I I wanted to go to a massage therapist. I asked a friend of mine and they recommended her. And I had this pit in my stomach, like, oh, that woman was so intense. <laughs> but they were like, she's the best. And I'm like, all right, my body needs the best. So I went there and no joke during the massage, she said, uh, Danielle, my husband has had um, two head injuries and he's also had a, a clot and, you know, he's had, had an issue with that. And uh, she said, I'm at the end of my rope. And I remember you saying that you had a similar thing. Do you think this stuff would help? And I said, well, I know it can't hurt. And I would do it for at least three months. And I would do at least eight ounces. And she goes, okay, I'm going to do it. He's going to do it. And we'll see how it goes. Three months later, she said, Danielle, he's, his speech is back. He's talking again. He's got energy. He can go to the gym. And she said, you gave me my husband back. And she had me come over to the house. And he gave me the biggest hug. He's a PhD, brilliant mind. And he said, thank you so much. Like you've given me my life back. I get chills now, full body. I see, yes, we have emotional <laughs> yeah. Because it's like, she, and she had been so intense with me, but it's like, I was so convicted. Like I knew what I knew, like I knew this stuff worked. And so it was like, I had to move through that and stay in my knowing, you know, until she was ready to come to that level of knowing and have the experience. And I thought I will never stop. I will never stop sharing because I have to get to these people. Where would he be if I had just like given up or been like caught into a ball because she's mean? Like, I just, I know what I know. And I'm so grateful for Catherine, for you, for bringing this to a, so it has a voice so it can get out to more people because knowledge is power. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Know, you might be like my friend Denise, where like now's not the time, but six months from now, you're like, wait a second, I learned about something. I think this can help, you know? And if you're not aware, you don't know your options, you don't know the tools that are, available to you, you might be stuck. Like, and there's so many people praying for things and like, who knew the answer's in a blue bottle. <laughs> well, and that's the I expected. There's this huge like joke about like, you know, you know, when you pray for something, we have expectation and reality. And it's like, uh, what was that? that like, you know, the guy's flooded and he's standing on his roof and he's praying for God to rescue. And the helicopter comes by and he waves him off because he's waiting for God. Then a canoe comes by and he waves him off because he's waiting for God. And God's like, dude, I'm sending you rescue, you know, like, yep. <laughs> yeah. And, um, and I actually, I can't wait. And I want to, I, I really want to get my mom on this. I want to get my stepdad on this. I want to get, you know, for me, cause they're, you know, and I will say, I think as we, you know, they're, they're in their sixties pushing seventies now, but they are acting younger than my grandparents did at that age. Cause I think mm -hmm. that, that we are shifting as a species, but you know, I, I want to say this kind of, my mom's on a lot of like medications, um, this will not counter the medications that you're on, will it? In that fact, was my number one question because I had I had like broken down and was taking something for the migraines. And uh, it was like a gabapentin, I think, or something like that. And it made me feel so weird at night. But I remember saying to my parents, like, well, I'm nervous because I can already feel that impacting my brain. And like, I, what if there's some contraindication? Like, we don't want to mess with my brain. So I went into that hardcore. Redox molecules, what's in that blue bottle, already in you your body is already interacting with whatever medicine or supplement that you're taking. Redox molecules are already interacting with it. So it's impossible for there to be a contraindication. What can happen, like if people take things for like their sugar levels, right? And now, you know, what they were taking was to help kind of mask the symptom, right? Uh, this now goes to the root and it says, hey, pancreas, you, know, you need to start doing the correct thing. Let's get the cells working properly. And if it starts working properly, you could over medicate. I had a nurse one time, she had blood pressure issues and she kept saying to me, Danielle, I'm so dizzy. I'm so dizzy. And I said, I think you're over medicating. Like she went to her doctor and sure enough, her, her body had restored normal functioning with her blood pressure. And so she wasn't needing that anymore, but because she was taking it, it was throwing her off. So it's something I don't tell people to stop. I'm like, everything you're doing, keep doing it. Like stay right where you're at, add this in. And then just monitor, what do you need? What do you not need? I made the decision. I self-made the decision to 
you know, stop what I was taking six months after being on the redox. Cause I was like, I don't actually think I need this anymore, you know? And so I just, I weaned myself off and I've been fine. <laughs> Haven't taken medicine since. And you know what? So I was thinking too, cause I, I you know, I'm real, I'm pretty healthy. I, I keep, you know, I, I exercise all the time. I eat uh, for my dosha. I'm very aware of what I'm eating, uh, plant-based, all that kind of stuff. But I do, you know, I get up so early in the morning. I get up for Brahma Morta. So I'm up between 3.30 and 4 in the morning to do my practice. And then I work all day. I research, you know, I by 5, 6 o'clock at night, I'm pretty tired. And so, and we go to bed pretty early um, because of that. But these last couple of nights, I've noticed I've had some extra energy. Yeah. <laughs> We were in bed last night watching a docu series on cults, and I like looked at my boyfriend. I was like, "Am I gonna have to take a Benadryl because <laughs> I'm awake, <laughs> awake right now? Like this is weird." Like, and I was like, "I don't see a Sia or just you know, I'm just excited right now about the product. I don't know, but I was like, do we have melatonin? I know I have Benadryl, so I think I'll just have to." My parents used to slip us Benadryls when we had to take long car trips. So I know, I know oh, the power funny. of Benadryl. But, <laughs> um, you know, because I was like, I, I'm getting up early. And I was just kind of like twiddling my thumbs, like waiting for the, the exhaustion. And it never came. And and um, it's like, I, I describe it like an energizer bunny. Like I just, it's not like a high from caffeine or anything. It's just no. like, I wake up alert and I just, I just go. But I'll say like when my head hits the pillow, I usually fall asleep very quickly. Yeah, once we turned, I did actually end up falling asleep last night, but it was such a weird sensation. And when I was in my early 20s in college and then after college, I, and my mother would say this about me when I was a child, and this is a Vata trait for the Vatas out there. We don't require as much sleep. Like when I was a kid, I, in my early 20s, I could do four, four to five hours of sleep a night. And I'd be fine, but that's a Vata. Um, so the fact that I'm getting tired, so it might just be my body's ca calibrating back to where maybe it was when I was in my early 20s, you know, where I, you know, where, because my system, that's what I love about Ayurvedic medicine is that every single human being is different, kind of like what the redox is doing, where it's meeting you where you are, the disposition, that's, you know, Ayurvedic, Western medicine might say you need eight hours of sleep a night, where Ayurvedic medicine goes, ah, depends on the person. Like right. depends, you know, depends on their system. So that's why that's why I love about Ayurveda because it's not one size fits all. But yeah, it might just be that. Um, so congratulations, guys! You might be getting even more videos because <laughs> <laughs> she's not going to sleep anymore. <laughs> I might be just researching all night, so it might be like I'm back in college again. Um, you know, to get and you save up all night to research and you know go into school the next day and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, but getting it, I was I I I, I laugh about you know the the form of yoga that I practice is really very intense as ashtanga it's it's like very um standing up with your leg behind the head it's you know doing back forward to back handsprings it, it's they 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 ask a lot out of you and there's a reason for that but i always laugh you know when you start to get to your late 30s early 40s you can you actually really start to feel the effects even if you look healthy you start to feel your body going ah. <laughs> <laughs> there's a limit <laughs> wait a minute that that didn't feel the same 10 years ago you know? <laughs> so so i'm really excited to see and my friend one of my friends up in uh canada who's a, who's she's a few years old she's already into her 40s and she's like yeah there comes a point where you have to start giving posters back so i'm actually really curious to see how the longevity of like an intense yoga practice is going to uh just a uh, long term to see how that you know my, my boyfriend's in his 50s like he, he works out like how's the, how, how's he gonna start to you know are we gonna go back to and that's that's the thing right guys we, we it's not like the, we want a quality life right we want to enjoy and that's that's what i love alan watts and when someone asked him like what's the point of life after he studied in the east and brought back eastern philosophy he said the point of life is to be alive and I, I think it's David Silverman, you know, Dr. Silverman, he says all the time, look, all this does, it helps you live younger, longer. Yeah. And I've like meditated on that statement. And it, it is profound because it's, we want to be here, but we want to live good years. You yes. know, you want to have that youthfulness in you, in your mind and in your body longer. And th that's what this does. You know, like I said, with the flowers, like you'll see, they live younger looking longer <laughs> I think i'm gonna actually do that i think because we have we can't i can't keep plants here at my house because my dog thinks it's a salad bar <laughs> just, uh -huh. that's funny my cat does that <laughs> but they're at the business so i think that would be a good experiment to to, to actually um to try that and just uh, just yeah 
film it over time to show what's happening with the plant life. You know, um, yeah, my my uncle, one of my uncles who unfortunately uh, passed away a couple of years ago, he passed away right before the the shenanigans started. He missed the fun stuff of, of the world <laughs> closing down. But he he died of uh, a soph- uh, cancer of a esophagus, so terrible cancer to die. But he used to talk about he would call it QTR, quality time remaining. Uh, after he went into retirement before he got sick he was constantly going with my aunt on these expeditions biking hiking because he really wanted to take advantage of what he called quality time remaining when his body was still functioning and he was still able to do certain things before old age settled in so i love that it's just going to expand your quality time remaining and that's really interesting about the um uh, alzheimer's the um what you were saying with uh, the other uh dementia yeah Uh uh-huh Um, I'm curious to see my, my grandmother actually had dementia when she passed away and she was, I always, you know, the universe is so funny because she was one of the first in her, her demographic of, uh, you know, women, she graduated from college and she was the valedictorian of her college in a a year and time when women did not go to school and so she, or go to college. And so she really pride, she had a lot of pride in her education and the fact that her mind was what actually went you know, um, and towards the end there, but to see how that actually affects cognitive abilities with people too. Um, you know, I, I know the older you get, especially for me, when I was a kid, I could remember what homework I, assignments I had without writing them down. Now I have to re- walk right down when I need to go to the grocery store and get water. Like, you know, it's like, it's like I know it's so <laughs> funny. Well, I'll say this for those listening, like reach out to Jay because there's testimonials and it's like password protected websites and things. So um, just ask like that number, his his number that's down there, reach out, say Bryce to see you. But if there's something you want beyond just like starting your own experience and and getting going, which do it because (laughs) it's going to do something different for you, right? Vlog along with Bryce. It'll be so fun to see the results that everybody has. But he can get you plugged in with testimonials. You can go and it's like, you know, any issue that you might have, click, what's what's this person have to say about it? What was their experience with that? And it's nice to be able to go to people that have similar issues. Like my mind's up there. And so I get people all the time that have had head related stuff yeah. saying to me like, oh my gosh, thank you. And how much did you take? And how long do you felt things going on? So, so there's like a plethora of information and we have uh, Q and A's also with like members of the medical board. So uh, reach out, you know, we can get Yeah, that's actually, Catherine and I were going to talk about that too for people who want, because I, I, everybody knows on this channel, I think, Danielle, you're the same. Guys, you have to do your own research too. You have to be confident in what you're doing. Um, And, um, and so absolutely do that. But, um, but I mean, I've heard uh, somebody put in the comment section um, and shout out if that you were that person that it helped your blood pressure, your blood pressure went down. You know, these things that we always think, oh, I got to go take a pill for this. I got to go do this. But no, the body actually wants to heal. Your body wants to heal you. That's your body's job is to heal. That's, that's the beauty. That's, I mean, I, you know, I have a huge faith and I've, I'm a huge fan of God. I have, I have a huge belief in a higher consciousness of, of a source that, because I, I always say that atheists have to have way more faith than those of us who are believers because it's so miraculous that it it has to be naturally designed by something that's here for our best benefit. And yeah, I, I, um, and you guys, for those of you who are doing the products, let us know in the comment section, your experiences too. I haven't heard one person since I've been doing this less than a week. I haven't heard one person say anything. I've gotten nothing but rave reviews about this product. Because it can't hurt you. (laughs) It's like the only problem is that people stop before they have a result. They expect an instantaneous like shift. And I'm like, no, have correct expectations. Like your body didn't get in this situation overnight. Yeah. It might not get out of it overnight. You know, this stimulates cellular repair. Like you don't feel when you're low in vitamin D, you know, and then you don't feel when you're back. You just, you have blood work to see that. So you might not feel repair. Like my brain, it took three months for me on the system level to feel what had been happening, but my cells had been repairing, the tissue was repairing, the organ in itself then had repaired, and that's when I felt it on the system level. But that took three months at eight ounces a day. You so know, your, your body was doing the work, you just weren't aware of it until you I didn't know. Yeah, I just didn't know. And to be fair, I was also not looking, like you're long, you're looking like, and your, your boyfriend, he's looking. I wasn't, cause I was like, this is BS, you're wasting your money. Like I was totally like, this stuff's not gonna work. So I wasn't really even paying attention. So there could have been things that were indicators that I just like wrote off. 
Uh, but at three months, it was very clear. And, and I tell people three months is where I see 90%. Like we'll give you a health tracker when you start baseline yourself, like your boyfriend is like, where is everything at for your body? Check in a week from now, check in a month from now, two months, three months. Like when you compare back, you're going to see shifts. It might not be one drastic shift in one area. It might be everything jumps up two points, you know? So if you weren't paying attention, you probably wouldn't have noticed it, <laughs> but you know, it's just overall sense of well being went up or like my hair, my hair grows so fast <laughs> and my nails do too. And they're not brittle anymore. Like they're super strong. I used to, I used to, my nails used to like break and all the time. Now, mm -mm. like they're just, they go. That's because again, because the body wants, the body wants you to be healthy. That's its job Mm -hmm. is to make you healthy. Right. And so now I have a couple of questions. I actually, I vlogged this this morning because I do really intense workouts in the morning where I sweat. I sweat like a 300 pound man with gland problems, which actually is a healthy, I mean, that's the healthy body, right? Because the body is detoxing. But, um, so I was, I did my, my serving of redox in the morning. I did it yesterday before I started working out. And then maybe that was my OCD anxiety. I was like, oh no, did I just sweat that out? So <laughs> no. <laughs> so what would you, if somebody's watching here is a hardcore runner or exerciser and has a, would you suggest taking it before in the morning you exercise or after? Well, so the athletes that we work with, they actually do both. So they take their morning and evening, like a t- typical person, but then they do pre-workout and post-workout because- oh. When you take it, again, it shifts your body. What we saw with those um, the mice study is that it shifts your body into fatty acid metabolism. And so in your workout, you're going to be able to get more out of your body before the lactic acid builds up, before your muscles yes. get fatigued. So you will run further. You will notice that you're able to up in your weights. You can lift more. Um, and then post-workout, it's going to focus on, like you said so beautifully, well, athletes are just breaking down muscle, which is just cells. This yes. repairs cells. So when you take it after a workout, it's going to stimulate the repair process faster. So your recovery time is shorter. Uh, so tomorrow, guys, because I'm doing eight. Jay told me just to go ahead. And maybe it's because of Magic the eight. Yeah. Like, I've just, been doing eight ounces. Eight. <laughs> You'll have to start with eight. You're already in your forties. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> um, so I'm going to do that tomorrow in a vlog. I'm going to do my the cup. So I do two cups in the morning, then two cups in the afternoon. So I'm going to do my first cup before my practice and then the cup after my practice Perfect. so yeah but of course an ocd anxiety mind would be like oh shit did i just sweat this <laughs> you're not no your body no problems, you you are <laughs> no problems. <laughs> where's the problem like always trying to find the problem um another question so we know children already kind of have a very healthy redox system so first question is should children do this or if they shouldn't if a child does get like an injury can they take like a cup for the injury and then that, but what would you, you're as a biologist, what would be your suggestion with children? Yeah. So kiddos, they make a ton of it. And so they respond really quickly. So if their system, right. Cause they also get sick a lot because their immune systems are needing to do, you know, to learn. They're, um, licking, they're licking each other. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> they're snoring on each other. Yeah. Do what they're supposed to do. Yeah. Um, so it's totally fine. Some, um, some of my friends that have kids since they were infants, they gave them like two ounces just every day, just to kind of maintain because it's helping constantly detox your system, right? Because glutathione levels are upregulated. So think about all the toxins that kids and everybody's exposed to. It's just going to help the system to release that stuff and help repair. It also like one of the studies that was done on it, it shows that it upregulates the gene that supports with your innate immune response, which is this response that goes after viruses and other things. So that upregulates. Well, that's amazing. So a kid can have a more robust response. Great. Like, you know, but they don't need eight ounces a day. They don't need even four. I would give them just two. Um, Again, this is totally just based on age and looking at also what their research has showed. But yeah, I would say two ounces, you're good. Now, if this is a kid that has a challenge, because we do know that some kids have challenges, then I would look at it differently. Um, The topical is really nice. So kids that have sensory issues that maybe are not integrating as well with things, um, you can rub the gel on their vagus nerve. Okay. Yeah. Belly button. You can rub it on the bottoms of their feet, base of their skull. It's going to get into their system uh, and help their system to regulate. So there's some incredible stories, things that I've witnessed. Um, with kiddos we'll just say somewhere on this spectrum yeah um and 
the testimonial site, you can go listen to them. Like, it's just listen to these moms talk about it. And you're like, holy cow. And I'm like, what do I have my hands on? <laughs> you know? yeah, this like, is literally, I mean, this is, I, I know Jay and April called the elixir of the gods. I'm also thinking fountain of youth. Like this is, you yeah. know, and it's so funny. I, I, I think about when I, so I, I had an, a, broke my ankle when I was in high school and I, I went to the, again, you, cause my, cause of who I was. Yeah, you're right. Doctors kids get in first. <laughs> Sorry. Guys. Yeah. That's what, I mean, they put me right in. And the guy who the doctor knew my grandfather. So, you know, yeah. um, and I, I'll never forget. I've, I've told this story before, but they put the x-ray up and it had gotten my shin bone as well. Mm -hmm. And the doctor just goes, Oh, you broke your shin when you were a kid. There's a, there's a clear scar. And my mom goes, I looked at my mom, my mom, no, I've never, and he goes, yeah, you, you have a clear cut scar. You, you broke, it, it was broken at one point. And, and, and my mom started to panic. He goes, oh no, 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 that's okay. Sometimes this happens. You were probably really young. You know, you're probably like a toddler and they maybe heard you cry. And then all of a sudden that your body just healed itself. Cause that's what, so we wow. think about redox, like he goes, hey, apparently that happens a lot with kids that, that you'll have a scar on your bone that you broke as a kid and no one ever treated it because you maybe <laughs> cried a little bit, but then how quickly the body was able to like put the bone back together. Like clearly I'll never forget it. You could see the little scar on the bone, but it was I've never heard anything like that. Whoa. <laughs> it had put the bone completely back together, like completely put it back together. And, um, and I actually, there's a, a family channel that I watch a lot. Cause I just think their kids are really cute and they make me happy, but their little two-year-old daughter had just broken her arm and she didn't, um, when, when they just noticed she was kind of like not using it. But she wasn't crying. She wasn't. So that's why they took her in. They had to cast it. And then, of course, the whole blog was the defects got involved and they had to go through questioning because, you know, when a kid comes in with, you know, simple accident. But anyway, but it just shows you like how resilient kids' bodies are. But I would think if a child were to like break a bone, because, you know, kids will do stuff like get on the trampoline with the rollerblades on. So you know? <laughs> exactly. you're very prone to issues. Yeah, this stuff becomes like first aid in a tube, honestly, like exactly. the gel. My friend has it in a diaper bag. Like it's you that use it for everything because there's no toxicity. You can rub it on, you can put it directly on, you can stimulate the body to go to that area to hear, oh, the issues over here, you know, and then if they're drinking the liquid innately, it's going to get the job done. So it's amazing outside in, inside out. You got all these options. Well, Danielle, I know we're coming up on an hour. I love this conversation. I can't believe it's actually been an hour. And <laughs> the vagus nerve, I've been wanting to do an episode on the vagus nerve because that is, I think, one of the most underrated, under talked about mm. nerve systems. And we look at it a lot in yoga. Would you come back and can we do an episode on the vagus nerve? We can talk more for sure. <laughs> Let's talk yeah. more. Maybe so you guys less. I don't know if you guys know, because like I tell like, you know, in, in yoga, we do like up dog, like you're stretching out. That's a stretching of, of that and like how that nerve affects the system and all that kind of stuff. I know people who who go through trauma sometimes become chain smokers. And I know for the Vegas Nerve, what they're doing is they're actually that's stimulating the nerve to calm it down. There's so many and I would love to bring you back on and talk about the ASEA too, but more details into when you said the vagus nerve i was like jackpot we need to like <laughs> talk more about how awesome you know we, we were we've been inundated for like three years now about how how feeble we all are mm -hmm. and how you know we're, we just need all these little jabberty doos and um yeah well, what I'll tell you what, like i believe you know having gone through what i went through and i feel like the collective went through it over the last three years where it's like just a huge shift in your reality, a huge shift in perspective, a total change on like, what's real, what's not real, who am I? Like, who has control of my life? What decisions am I making? All these things. And I'll tell you, people don't talk about this enough. It's called post-traumatic growth. It is moving through trauma and using it as the stimulator that it's supposed to be. Just like you go to the gym and you work out, we go through challenges, our, our soul calls in these obstacles, these traumas, because we're supposed to be learning a lesson. We're supposed to be learning the, the capacity we have within, right? A different perspective. We're supposed to be getting in touch, you know, with our true selves and our, and our higher selves. And if you don't have, as you said, the friction, if you don't have that, you're never going to be stimulated to have that growth. And a lot of people get stuck in the trauma response with PTSD and they stay in this low space, this low energy space around it, 
because they haven't realized, oh, this happened for me. Oh, this yeah. was stimulate the growth. Yeah, they missed that. And so I, I talk about it all the time over on my channel and on my social medias. I'm like, because I want people to realize this. And especially after what we all just went through, like people are questioning now and they're a little confused. And I'm like, look, use this time to go inward. You know, this was just like meant to wake you up a little bit, not because somebody out there has the answers, like you've got the answers within, like this triggered certain things in you that you need to now resolve and pay attention to. I love that. And I love that you said it's not happening to you. It's happening for you. Oh, yeah. you know, and that's, um, I'll, I'll, I've, so I don't know if you're familiar with the law of one, Danielle, but they laugh about how um, um, when we come to earth, when we decide to, and what we're doing, what our soul's doing is our soul is finding places that where it needs to refine itself. So there are things that the soul needs. So it, so it, it basically like you're sitting down and creating a college syllabus, like you're sitting down with them, you know, creating classes. That, and, and the law of one laughs at humans because sometimes they're like, too much like you put too much like you don't need yeah. to be hit by 10 drunk drivers <laughs> Just i know that's where i'm like i had an obstacle course put in place in this life <laughs> up to 34 it's been quite a quite a course so far <laughs> my friend was like i think i need to speak to the manager because i think i was left unsupervised <laughs> who approved this i know what what, where were my advisors? Because this is, well, they, because when we're in soul form, where we're just in our soul, we see these lives as so quick that right. we try to get a lot in. Yes. But when we get down here. Stretches out. <laughs> it's it's heavy. Emotions are intense. <laughs> Shit gets real, you know? And so, <laughs> Very so, real. You know, it's like our, our, our overlords or whatever, our, our spirit guides are like, oh. again, thank you. Young drivers is not, you know, I, I appreciate the enthusiasm, but just the one is fine. <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> and so, and the fact that you can even like, and that's one thing my teacher in India says, talking about vibrations, guys, my, and I know people on my channel have heard me say this before. My teacher in India is very clear about this. You want to be high up on the spiritual totem pole, laugh, uh -huh. laugh at yourself, yeah. be able to, that that's one of the highest levels of spirituality is a sense of humor. And to be able to kind of, and when we're in that low vibrational trauma st space, we're not able to see the humor. We're not able to, to, to you know, to, to make a, a joke about things that are hard. But that's, you know, we're not trying to take those things lightly, but just being able to understand that your vibration is what's healing you, you know, and that and the redox, of course, is what's helping that yes. along its path. So this has been so awesome. Danielle, I'm going to put all of your links down in the description box as well, too, so people can um, can check you out as well. And uh, yeah, this stuff can't hurt you guys. Like, I'm telling you, if, if there was a situation where this stuff could actually hurt someone, I would not be promoting it because I wouldn't want people to, like, accidentally do something to hurt them. I, mean, I don't think you would either, Danielle, nor would Catherine. Like, this stuff, you can't, you can't fuck up. So, <laughs> like, you know, so. That's why I've been so confident because it's like, I know that I know that it's going to help their body. You know, I've had friends, like I said, with little babies and going through everything. Like, and they're like, can I, I'm like, yes, like it cannot hurt you. It's already in you. It's already in the baby. Like totally fine. Well, so. I'm thinking about too, like I'm thinking about, I know a lot of women um, who, when they had their baby could not produce enough milk. Mm. And so the baby had to go on formula. And I know a lot of mothers have guilt about that because we know formula isn't that great. But I'm thinking even if you put a little bit of the redox in there, it might help the baby get what the baby needs, the nutrients, and then it's help. help the it's going to help the system to take, to take it in. A yeah. lot of times, you know, with nutrition, it's like having all of these like building blocks out front of the house, you know, but there's been no one to come take them inside the house and put them to work. Like redox helps you uptake it. Um, yeah. More so yes that's that's awesome yeah i'm i'm so excited i can't wait like i said guys my boyfriend who is not a public figure he is refusing to look at any type of 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 experience because he wants to have a completely natural response to to his experience with it so i'm excited to see what he jots down as he as goes <laughs> yeah no and i'm like i'm like are you serious i'm like i'm like reading everybody's experiences so, <laughs> i'm nosy i want to snoop to see what happened but uh but uh yeah so yeah you guys and i will be putting so i'm gonna what i'm gonna do for my channel you guys watching i've been vlogging i'm gonna vlog myself for a week straight then i'm gonna put that up and then i'm gonna vlog myself for a second week and then i'll probably not vlog for a while then come back and vlog again and so yes if anybody out there wants to 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 film themselves, just contact me. We can make a whole reel of people, you know, in their natural lives, like what's happened. Somebody asked if this was good for weight loss too. I would assume so because it's just helping the body 
get in its own alignment anyway. Yeah, you know, can help with hormone modulation, like it depends on what the weight gain is around. If you're not eating well, we can't fix that. But you know, it's going to help your system modulating hormones. Some people because it shifts you into fatty acid metabolism. I have some people they didn't change anything. But that was what their body needed. They lost like 17 pounds. I had a couple they were in their 60s. And they're like, this is a weight loss thing. I said no, but for you, it is because that's what your system needed. <laughs> Surprise! That was yeah. your <laughs> Yeah, no, and that, that and, and April said something too on my show, you know, when you feel better, you want to eat better. You do. Yes. You know, and, and that's what I love about food. Food is magic. You know, uh, an app. That's what I love about the Ayurvedic system. Again, like a raw apple isn't going to be good for everyone. It's not good for vatas. Our system can't handle it, you know, but when you start to feel better, you want to eat the foods that also make you feel better, not just in that moment with that Snickers bar, but long-term feel better. And so it, it can't hurt your weight loss. It can't hurt, you know, that, 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 um, that path you're on. So, well, thank you so much, Danielle. This has been so fun. I can't wait to film with you again. And you're just yeah. so cool. And I'll <laughs> ask you guys, if you guys have any questions for Danielle down in the comment section, ask away, you know, and, and, and let let us uh, let well, not me because I'm I'm new to it too. But <laughs> let Danielle and Jay and the oh, no. and <laughs> a team of people that can help you. And you know, <laughs> Catherine's a biologist, so is Danielle. There's so many people with actual medical experience that can really talk you through the molecular structure of the pro uh, the product about what's happening with you and how those two are working together. So, thank you so much, Danielle. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much, Bryce. It was great to meet you. Great to hang out. Bye, guys. Have a wonderful day.